Hey guys, glad you're back with us this week as we continue in Bible studies for life. Today we're in lesson number six, and wow, we've got such a huge topic today. It's called Sure of Salvation. I'm going to struggle with that today, so just stick with me, okay? Again, I'm glad you guys are back with us, uh, joining us. Uh, whether you've got your material or not, this is your first time or you've been with us since the beginning of it, that's great. We're just so happy that you're tuning in today to see what God's got for us, including me. Let me start with the question of what do you wish came with a guarantee? Oh, man, there's so many things that I wish that, you know, I wish that uh, my car came with a better guarantee or warranty, if you will, right? Or... Oh, uh, some things would just not wear out as fast, like, uh, well, just things we have as a kid as toys seem to break down really fast, or those toys that you buy for your kids that wear out pretty fast, too. Anyways, hey, check this out. Here's our one-liner for today, if you will. It says, we can be sure God saves us when we trust in Christ. Man, that seems really easy to, to just read and understand, but to really take to heart uh, is it really that easy? This is our topic today. It's such a huge topic. So I hope you guys are just ready to sit down, chill out for a second, and let's dig into this together. If you guys have your Bibles, we're going to be in 1 John 5 today. Go ahead and turn there as we're going to finish up in 1 John. What a great book this has been, uh, this letter from John, uh, and so much that goes into this, right? Here's, here's how we're going to dig in today. Uh, this study says that God's salvation is eternal, and once we are adopted into God's family, nothing can separate us from Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, if you want to read more about that, check this out. Romans 8.38. It should help with that. Nothing. Just plain and simple. Nothing. Go to Romans 8.38, and that'll make more sense. Look, many people have asked this question, including myself. Uh, if I fall into sin after I've trusted in Christ, uh, can I lose my salvation? Wow, that's a deep and tough question that some of us may struggle with. But remember, we can be sure that God saves us if and when we put our trust in Christ. Remember that for today. See, the Apostle John wrote this letter so that you would know you could have eternal life. We're going to see that in 1 John 5, verse 13. Now look, how can we know? Because those who are truly born again conquer the world, which means that they overcome the patterns of sin and brokenness and by the power of the Spirit, right? And by faith in Christ, not on our own doing. Check out this quote from our study today. It says, when we experience salvation in Jesus, it should be obvious by our actions that we have been saved and are a part of his family. Now the old saying goes, and I've said this to our students here at Marion First Baptist a few times, as an illustration, it's like, oh wow, guys, hey, I had the craziest morning on the way here, um, I got hit by a semi, and he was, man, he was going 80 miles an hour. I got hit by a semi. And like, what? Like, what? Like, how could that be true? Now, why might they not believe that, right? Because I don't look like I've been hit by a semi. Are you tracking with me? Are you understanding what we're saying? It's, it's, see, it's not all about looks, but obedience. Don't miss this. Obedience that doesn't point to the world. That's how we look different. We don't look like the world, right? Do you have a minute to talk about your car's extended warranty? <laughs> There's so many funny memes out there, and those phone calls come all the time for some of us. We know that if you have a car, right, and your warranty has expired. Look, we value warranties and guarantees, right? But how do we know if a religion actually delivers on what it promises, right? See, many religions claim to offer people a way to God for eternal life, but how do we know that we'll actually make it? Something to think about, right? Check it out. Islam teaches paradise awaits for those who are obedient to the practices of Islam, but there are no guarantees about what is truly good enough, right? Hinduism says that reincarnation might eventually get people to enlightenment or they might be reincarnated again and again and again and again right and check this out some cults 
even believe in Jesus, but they don't see Jesus' work as sufficient. So, they think people must add to their own works, but no clear standard about when people have done enough. Wow, that's exhausting, right? The Christian life, however, which is based solely on the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, points us to the death and the resurrection of Christ as the only path to salvation. I'm going to go with that option. You can make your own decision. However, I, having believed that, look, I can do nothing to add to the gospel, and I can do nothing to take away from it to make it any better. Christ has come and died in my place, covering, atoning for the sin that I could not pay for on my own, right? I literally received this free gift of God, of sending his son to die in my place. Gift received, right? Hallelujah, amen. Look, when we are simply trusting in Christ, when we simply trust in Christ and what he has done, we can be assured of that relationship with God. 1 John is first and foremost a letter of assurance. We have focused on our study on five things that we can be sure of. Here's uh, forgiveness, uh, a relationship, the truth, victory, and God's love, as we talked about last week. Today's study focuses on being certain of salvation. Now, we can be sure God saves us when we trust in Christ. Now, in chapter 5, John focuses on three things we can know. The first one is we are born of God because we trust Jesus is the Christ. We're going to get to that. And the second thing is, is we have eternal life because God's word says so. And the third thing that we're going to see is that we are saved because our lives have changed. There's evidence. I've been hit by that semi, right? Look, 1 John 5 verse 1 is where we're going to start at. If you haven't turned there yet, go ahead and do that as we hop into Scripture. 1 John 5 1 says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father also loves the one born of him. Verse 2 says, This is how we know that we love God's children when we love God and obey his commands. Verse 3, For this is what love for God is, to keep his commands, and his commands are not a burden, because everyone who has been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has conquered the world. What is it? Our faith. Verse 5 says, Who is the one who conquers the world out of the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Now, look, John presented three specific assurances. First one is faith, which is necessarily is which is necessary for salvation, is based on what we believe, right? In order to know God and have assurance of our faith, we must believe the truth about Jesus. Now, if we believe wrong things about Jesus, then everything else is going to be wrong as well. In turn, a right relationship with God is based on the right beliefs about Christ. Now, the second thing he was talking about with assurance is that love. God loves people, and his love is demonstrated most clearly in Jesus' sacrifice, a true demonstration of his love for the world. And we are called to follow Jesus in the ways that we live, and one of the most powerful ways that we can know we are God's children is that we love others in uh, ways that reflect Christ's love, right? Can we, are we walking as Christ walked? Now, the third thing is obedience. If we are God's children and we truly love him, we will live in obedience. Those who possess genuine saving faith and have been transformed by the power of the Spirit will live in obedience to God. Wow, that's kind of a lot to take in, right? And remember a little bit ago, I said it's not going to be out of a burden. Like, we're going to feel like we have to do these things. You're going to have a desire to want to do these things, to live in obedience. What does the word say? How can I know God more, right? What we believe impacts how we live. Think about that. Journal about that maybe today. That's your topic maybe. 
what we believe impacts how we live. When we live by faith, God gives us victory over the broken world system that is under the control of Satan. Like Jesus is the sovereign Lord. And through his crucifixion and resurrection, he has proven his power over sin and death. So why should we believe in Jesus? See, the evidence that Jesus is the Christ is overwhelming. Stick with me for a second as we go through some of these. See, Jesus pointed to himself as God in human flesh. And we read that in John 8, 58 and John 10, 30. And Jesus was explicitly identified as God by the apostles, John and Paul. Two men who encountered Jesus. And you can see that in John 1, 1, Romans 9, 5, Philippians 2, 5, and 6, Colossians 1, 15, and Titus 2, 13, right? Now, Jesus was described as having divine attributes, being omnipresent, right? And you can read about that in Matthew 28, 19, and 20, um, about him being eternal. And you read about that in John 1, 1 and 2. Or omnipotent and omnipresent and unchanging, right? Jesus operated with divine authority. He forgave sins, Matthew 9, 2, and raised the dead, John eleven thirty eight 38 through 44. Jesus accepted worship and honor due only to God, Matthew 14, 33, 28, verse 9. There's so many things, all these truths and many more point to Jesus as the Christ. As a result, those who trust in him are born of God. Now, if you guys want to dig deeper, not that we're not already deep enough, but here's a couple questions if you guys want to just continue to dig. First question is, what is the role of faith in our lives? <laughs> now, question number one, can you define faith in your own words? That's something that we're studying on Sunday nights with our students here just last weekend is what is faith? Can you put it in your own words? Can you make it not so Christianese so that a non-believer can understand it, right? And the second question is, how does our obeying God show our love for God? Eh, some good stuff. Let's keep digging. 1 John 5, verse 11. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. The one who has the Son has life. The one who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Verse 13, I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that, so that you may know that you have eternal life. How do you know? Well, I've written these things so that you will know, right? Through his word, God provides powerful encouragement to believers. Now, he doesn't want us as Christians to just go limping along in uncertainty. See, twice in the epistle, John referred to believers as conquerors. 1 John 4.4 4, and then again in 5.5. 5. See, God wants our lives to match our new identity. We are no longer enemies of God who were lost. Instead, we are conquerors in Christ, right? You thinking about that? You're a conqueror. In Christ. How cool is that? You ever been called a conqueror? Well, now you have if your faith and trust is in Christ. And we can know that we have eternal life because God's word says so, right? Not because mom and dad say so. Not because your granny says so or some pastor. Because God says so. God's word teaches that everyone who believes in the sun has eternal life. Who's the sun? The sun in the sky? No. No. S-O-N, Jesus Christ. This is a life that will never fade. It cannot be taken away. We might lose friends, our finances, our health, or even loved ones. But for those who are saved by grace through faith, our eternal life in Christ can never be taken, or our eternal life in Christ can never be uh, taken from us by anything, by anyone. Right? John's whole point of writing this short letter is that we may know we have eternal life in Christ. That's in 1 John 5, 13. Look, under the direction of the Holy Spirit, John wrote that we can be sure of our salvation. 
But this is not the only place God's word confirms the security of a believer uh, that we have in Christ. We are kept by the Father and the Son. Watch this. Jesus stated, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. That's in John 10, 27 through 30. And we are kept by the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. In him, you also were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed. That's Ephesians 1, 13. Now, there may be times when we struggle okay, uh, with doubt or with fear and particularly regarding our salvation. Right? We can get into our own minds. The enemy can get in and just looking for that little crack to come in and just devour our lives because he's prowling around like a little bunny, right? No. It says the enemy is prowling around like a roaring lion looking to devour and just giving that little inch, that little crack into what's going on to your life and that doubt, that fear of untrusting in God, the enemy can really use that. See, this usually happens when even as God's children, we disobey for a time. Or maybe you have doubts because you've never truly given your life to Christ. Now, that's a pretty big deal. And I want to encourage you guys, if that's you today, uh, reach out to someone that you know is a believer and have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Do I know that I know that uh, I've truly given my life to Christ? Look, for some digging deeper questions on these verses here, guys, check out first question. It says, what does it mean to have life through the Son? Second question here is, how would you explain eternal life to someone? Whew, that's a big question. And you really are going to have to know the Word of God and know your own testimony and know that you have eternal life before you can explain that. Another question is, where does our assurance of salvation come from? Look, whatever the case, know that God loves you. And he proved this by sending his son Jesus to die on a cross for our sins. Confess the ways that you have offended God's standards that we can't live up to. Right? Turn to him in faith and obedience. And God will forgive your sins and restore you to a right relationship with him. Confess, surrender, turn away from sin, and turn to salvation is our prayer for you. If you're watching this and you're not a believer. Hey guys, as we continue to dig in, we're going to start in 1 John 5, 18 as we, can, as we continue here. 18 says this, We know that everyone who has been born of God does not sin, but the one who is born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. Verse 19 says, we know that we are of God and the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know the true one. We are in the true one. That is, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Verse 21 says, little children, guard yourselves from idols. In this concluding section, John was very clear. The new birth has a real-world effect on our lives. One of the results of the new birth is a life characterized by obedience and repentance. Now, it is not that believers will never sin, but that we refuse to allow sin to be characterized as the pattern of our lives. Now, if you didn't hear that, I'm going to read that again because... Maybe you're sitting in that lifestyle right now. See, it's not that believers will never sin, because we will. We will continue to fall short, right? But that we refuse to allow sin to be what characterizes our lives. I hope that makes sense. Now tune in for this, if you will. For followers of Jesus, when we disobey, we take responsibility for our wrong choices. Right? And we turn back to God in repentance as a pattern for our lives. Not just every once in a while, but 
This is a daily thing, guys. Refusing to repent from sin or even having no concern for your sin at all is evidence of a person has never been transformed by the gospel. Salvation and forgiveness make Christians even more sensitive to sin. Meaning you're going to see it, you're going to have that conviction, you're going to feel it, and you're going to want nothing to do with it. See, there's a big difference between committing occasional sins and then repeating, repenting of those occasional sins versus living in habitual sin, unrepentant sin. Not only do believers' lives change, but watch this, but the one who is born of God keeps him and the evil one does not touch him. The new birth produces new behavior. The one who keeps us is Jesus. He is God's only son. John 3, 16, 1 John 4, 9, back that up. And is the one born of God. And he will not allow the devil to touch those who belong to God. Now further, Jesus protects us from Satan influences, keeps Christians from being uh, living in a lifestyle of sin. And look, in contrast, as we read in 1 John 5, 19, it says the world, the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. The world refers here to the fallen system, which is for a time under the control of Satan and opposed to God. People who buy into the world naturally, naturally live in ways which are offensive to God. But Jesus came to expose the darkness. Remember, there is only light in God. There is no darkness in him. And look, because Jesus came to expose that darkness, to open our eyes to the truth is why he did this, to help us know that God and his ways, right? Because believers are still tempted to sin, John gave one final encouragement in verse 21. Idolatry refers to anything that we value more highly than God. Wow, what would that be for you? In our culture, many people, even those who profess to be Christians, care about possessions or entertainment. Uh, they care more about relationships with people or popularity, right? Social media, it's all about me. Can I post a picture and how many little notifications are going to determine my value today? Man, what a sad place to live in, right? This is just not healthy. Look, sometimes even more, uh, the world, they care, for th they care for more things of the world than they do about God. And that's obvious in their lifestyle, right? This is exactly what John was addressing. We are to love God above all else. Otherwise, we dishonor God and we damage our testimony and we miss out on the assurance of, that's available to those who love God wholeheartedly. I don't know about you guys, but I want that assurance, right? I don't want to trade that for any worldly possession. Look, when we give our hearts away to other things, we ruin our testimony to the world. But when we resist temptation... And when we refuse sin, choosing instead to obey God in faith, we can be sure of our salvation. And God will use us to bless others for his glory. Now, again, if you guys, let's dig in a little deeper. Here's a couple questions. How does God protect us from the evil one? That's Satan, right? Another question is, how has your life changed since you first encountered God? Man, I hope you can answer that with just pages and pages of notes. Look, so how can we know? Because those who are truly born again conquer the world, which means to overcome a pattern of sin, um, of unrepentance, right? Um, we overcome the sin of brokenness. And by the power of the Spirit and faith in Christ, we can do these things. Like salvation equals transformation. We can know we are saved according to God's transforming work in our lives. There's going to be fruit of the Spirit there, right? Further, the life that Christ gives to us is eternal. And for those who truly are saved, guys, this life begins at the moment of surrender to Christ. This lesson is so often a hot topic of discussion among teenagers. I know it is of our group here. So I'm asking you uh, the same thing. So please... Pray diligently that God would remove any reason for your doubts, right? And seek mature believers 
to help you along this journey if you have these doubts, if you have this lack of assurance, right? Uh, guys, I hope that the Lord has spoke to you today. I hope that God has used me today in such a way um, that you guys are digging in, not for my name's sake or anything like that, but just so you're digging in deeper. I look forward to being with you guys next week as we talk about the basis for confidence. Guys, thank you all for being here. We love you, and we can't wait to see you next time.